question 16 of the <coughs> addendum for the physics boot camp. Question, question 16 says, which of the following forms an interference pattern when directed toward two suitably spaced slits? Light, B says sound, C says electrons, D says all of these. Well, this goes back to the very discovery of the interference pattern. And usually the experiment that uh, is the cornerstone of this is known as Young's double slit experiment. Young's double slit experiment in which he took light waves and um, he sent them towards suitably spaced slits and we talked about this when uh, I talked about uh, wave interference and we said that the, the light behaves as a wave so this actually, this experiment was the experiment that proved that light behaves as a wave. Um, the light waves that emanated from this uh, slit interfered with the light waves that emanated from this slit. And so if you draw them like wave fronts like this, and you have a screen, and then you draw this one with wave fronts, okay? Okay. You will see that the center, two um, anti-nodes constructively interfere and you get the highest amplitude wave. And then you get destructive interference and then constructive, destructive, constructive, and so on and so forth. So this leads to what's known as an interference pattern. This experiment establishes that light displays wave nature. Okay. Can that be true also of sound waves? Can you have two sound waves? How far apart should the two openings be spaced? Well, from the equation of interference, we have uh, d sine theta is equal to m lambda. So roughly speaking, in order for the angle to come out to, uh, to be a decent angle, you want the distance between the slits to be approximate multiple of the wavelength of the same order of magnitude. So for a light wave, since the wavelength of a light wave is much smaller, the distance between the slits needs to be a lot smaller, okay, in order to actually see a, a visible spectrum. Um, with sound wave, the wavelength of a sound wave is much bigger and the distance can be bigger, okay? An easy illustration of this is that when you are in another room, okay, and if somebody is talking in this room, the sound wave will uh, emanate from this person. And even if you happen to be on the other side of the wall, you will most likely hear the person, right? The sound wave will come outside of the door and it will also come outside of the other door and the two will go out outside and someone outside might be able to hear it because the thickness of the door happens to be as thick as about a sound wave of the same order of magnitude and the distance between the two doors happens to be as the same order of magnitude, right? So someone on the other side can hear you due to interference and diffraction of sound wave. How about, can someone on the other side of the wall still see you? Can the light wave emanating from you go through the door and through the other side of the door and come out um, through, the other, through the wall and can someone else see you over there? The answer is no. Light wave needs a lot, lot smaller distance, right, in order to have a visible interference pattern. So that's what it means to say suitably spaced slits. So, so far we established light and sound will both give you interference pattern. How about electrons? Well, if it's true that electron has a wave nature and that wave nature can be used to explain the discrete electron orbits, then we should be able to perform uh, the electron uh, interference, right? And see an interference pattern on the screen. The first best example of this experiment was done in 1961 by Johnson, uh, experiment in around 1961, and it actually yielded same interference pattern on the screen. And it was the electrons that were shot here, an electron beam, right? was shot here, and instead of a light wave being observed here, a bunch of electrons were observed in a central maximum, and then there was destructive interference, and there were hardly no electrons there. 
and then you saw some electrons here, first order maximum, no electrons. Then you saw second order maximum, and then so on and so forth. So the same interference was observed with electrons as with um, light and sound. In 1999, the same experiment was done with what's known as buckyballs. This is atom that is many hundreds of times bigger than the proton and it was visible under a microscope there the particles are so large and the same interference uh, experiment was done with buckyballs and it was shown that they also display the same interference pattern so the wave particle duality has definitely been established through different experiments that we have done okay thank you very much so the answer then in this case is going to be d all of these uh, display interference pattern, okay?